Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That goes a little better then? Yeah, absolutely. Much better. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, we are live. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. All right, so welcome. Welcome, everyone, to uh, our Groundhog Day edition of the Environment Committee meeting. Um, and also welcome to, so welcome to the members of the committee and welcome also to our folks, the attendees who are joining us here on Zoom and also the folks who are watching on YouTube. Okay, so, uh, so our first uh, order of business is uh, approval of the agenda. So Crystal had shared that in advance with everyone. Do we have any additions? Go ahead, Ewan. Uh, yeah, can we, oh, sorry, Yoan, were you going to say something? Go ahead, Angie. I'll, I'll um, can we add uh, if there's any um, updates to the uh, bag limits? We talked about it last time. Can we add that in? Okay, so I'll put that in. Um, hmm, I guess that's business arising from the minutes, I guess I put that in there. That sure. should be, yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'll put that as the next item on, I guess item B under business arising. Okay. And sorry, you and you had a. Yeah, I did circulate an email today, uh, but I would like to just uh, touch base on the updated uh, acceptable materials list, list from the uh, material, material recovery facility in Cornwall. There are some changes there. Um, we just have recently become aware of them, but I uh, just want to provide an update and uh, hopefully we'll provide some further details uh, a little later on. Oh, hi, Mike. So glad you're able to join us. Sorry about that, guys. Um, okay, so yeah, so we'd add that under, under new business, uh, Ewan. So, um, so we're just we're just at the point of uh, approving. We haven't approved the agenda yet. We're just seeing if there was any um, uh, additions or changes to the agenda. So uh, Angie asked for an update to the bag limit uh, discussion or recommendation that we had made to review that to council. And also uh, Ewan um, has added an under new business that uh, he's going to share some updated information he has with regards to what can be recycled in Cornwall. Anything else? Okay, great. So, uh, to be formal, if someone could move to approve the agenda, if someone could second it, please. Okay, so moved by Aiden, and seconded by Colleen. Okay, all in favor? Great, <laughs> everyone's in favor. Sorry, maybe I need to be louder. Okay, so. Okay, great. So the agenda is uh, approved. Uh, second item is uh, approval of the minutes from our previous meeting. Again, uh, Crystal shared that in advance. Did we have uh, any comments or changes on the on the minutes? You have uh, Mike Madden's name twice in attendance. We're okay. doubly happy. We're doubly there. I don't know. Two personalities. Yeah. Here, there twice. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I will. Uh, I'll have that amended uh, to take Mike's name out twice. Thank you. Just so, so other people know, there's not another person named Mike. Matt. God forbid. <laughs> they wouldn't want that. <laughs> Could be handy for work, though. Two of you. Any other? Any other comments or uh, updates, changes? No. Okay. Okay. Great. So, if there's no other changes, if I could have somebody move to approve the minutes. Okay. Moved by Mike and seconded by Angie. Okay. So, all in favor? Perfect. Thank you. Pass. Okay. Um, okay, so ne next is uh, business arising from the minutes. 
so as uh, as everyone remembers, we had a presentation uh, from uh, Food Cycler last week. We had uh, was Alex Heyman joined us from Food Cycler to present um, their uh, residential size uh, food composter. So um, I was, you know, now that we had that presentation and we had some time to, um, you know, sort of ponder the information, maybe, you know, look at it more, ask some questions. Uh, sort of the next step would be if we want to recommend, you know, we could recommend to council that they look at this further. So I guess before we get to the point of making a recommendation, did anyone have any follow-up comments from the presentation or? Great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Great comment. Well, I'm just, I'm sort of at the, the point of subsidy. I'm kind of looking at that going, you know, we might want to talk about the bag limit prior to a subsidy for uh, <clears throat> the food cycler. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree yeah, with to... that. Yeah, they kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> Has there, Stephanie, did that come back to council? Because you guys had already had the presentation, right? Prior to us having it. No, no, that's council has not had this presentation. We actually received oh. it first. So that could be one of the recommendations is that this be presented to, uh, to that, that we recommend that council gets a presentation. Okay, my apologies. I was under the impression you guys had seen it prior to us seeing it. <clears throat> well, we're on the app, we're on the vanguard here of this information. <laughs> Aiden, did you want to say something? Uh, no, I I agree with the, I think we have to look at the bag limit before we should make a recommendation for that or uh, just in general, that kind of idea. Okay, you're, you're thinking specific to the subsidy concept or are you saying we shouldn't yeah. recommend that we should? Okay. Are we you waiting you for um, some more stats to come through from a trial that they're doing? If I recall correctly from the end of the presentation? No, maybe not. Ewan, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, <laughs> Did the, he say the, something about there's a study he was doing, or they were doing like a test run with a community and they're gonna come back to us with some stats? Yeah, I think they were looking at doing a few pilot projects. I believe South Dundas was one of those areas. Um, ah, yes, you know, South Dundas, yeah. The, okay. The presentation was initially made to uh, administration, to the CAO, Crystal, and myself. Uh, and then uh, we, we determined that it would probably be best to have that presentation go to the Environment Committee uh, to see if there was uh, some interest and support for uh, th this concept. Uh, it can probably work hand in hand with the discussions on the bag limits, but the presentation uh, um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm certainly no surprise you, you probably all thought it might have been provided to council, but it has not been. So perhaps an option would be that we recommend that council ask a food cycler to make that presentation at an open public meeting. That gets it out to more people in the community as well. Um, and it doesn't have to preclude any discussions or any decisions on bag limits. It, it, it can be something that uh, could then be reviewed by council, some feedback from the public. Uh, then if council wished to proceed further along the road of looking at the, the food cycler and potential subsidies, they would likely push it back to the environment committee to look at the details and more of the specific um, uh, conditions in uh, the subsidy program. So, um, you know, the bag limits is certainly a high priority as well. Uh, but I'm not too sure if the committee necessarily needs to wait until decisions are made on bag limits before we look at other initiatives as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't like we don't have to make a recommendation to council that's, you know, very very detailed or very, you know very specific. You know, it can be very open ended. As, you know, like as Ewan was describing, it, you know, we recommend that council you know consider this this uh, product and, you know, we recommend that they get a, you know, that food cycler presented to them. And that might be 
more appropriate at this stage too, just because, you know, there's a lot of details in terms of like the funding and all that, how that might work. So I don't think we have those details and, you know, council could come back to us, like, because there's different models, right? Like in terms of how, uh, how it could be rolled out, you know, different subsidies, different ways it could be paid for. And they might, council might want our feedback on that, like as Ewan was describing. So I would, uh, I mean, I, I would think this is information that would be handy to council just with all the different things that are changing, you know, like with the whole, to have it like a holistic, you know, to have it in their mind that these are things that are available. Cause I'm not sure if many members of council would be, you know, even aware that there's, you know, products or programs like this. So I, I, I would, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to recommend something fairly broad um, and, you know, to start the conversation, but. Um, I'll, uh, I'd agree with you. I, as far as information to council, it would definitely be beneficial. Uh, and obviously it's up to council to figure out budget and uh, dollars that are available for it. Something I find interesting about this is, I, I think for areas like Glen Walter where uh, population is a little more dense, I think it would be much more applicable to sort of that area, maybe some of the hamlets. Uh, where people don't necessarily have an opportunity to compost in a conventional mm -hmm. sense. Um, maybe, and again, whether it's up to council or council wants it to come back to us, um, something like this in conjunction with an actual composting program, if you're going to do a, if there is going to be, if there were to be any kind of subsidy, any kind of funding towards this, I would encourage them to put at least as much towards composters for people in more rural areas. Because uh, obviously it's, a, it's an issue coming out of every household. We, we went down this road a number of years ago with uh, trying to encourage education about composting and, and uh, I think maybe selling them at a subsidized rate, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, yeah we did. So yeah, it's all sort of part and parcel as far as I'm concerned, uh, how it gets rolled out very much, uh, I think, beyond our uh, our pay grade, as it were. <laughs> I'd say to your point, Mike, about where there'd be, like, I've definitely had questions from folks in Glen Walter specific to wanting composting. How could they, how could that be something they could have access to? And so, and it's not something that I typically is brought up to me, you know, from folks like, for example, who would live like on, like on Maple Road where I live. Most of us, you know, have. Uh, but that's not to say that some of those folks might not be quite interested, actually, because one thing that I thought was really interesting about the food slicker is the fact that you can put bones in it. Mm -hmm. And I know with my respect, with my composting, I'm I'm reticent, right? To like, I don't put I don't put any kinds of bones in it because you know I have concerns about like that it won't break down properly or that I'll you know invite. Uh, Yep. Perhaps more visitors than I what I want. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so it, I mean, it's it's very true, and it's a completely valid point. I mean, bones, dairy, uh, anything that's that's sort of outside of the the generally accepted organic uh, feedstock. Yeah, if you're doing it at home, you're going to have some problems. That's that's generally accepted. Yeah. <clears throat> Colleen, did you? Have uh, thoughts on like the presentation? Uh, yeah, no, I, I I kind of agree with everything that everybody said. I find it uh, interesting. I think um, you know, uh, I think recommending that council see this first is probably the first step, um, and then go from there but uh yeah i mean the bag limit too they kind of like i said they kind of go hand in hand so what one uh, benefit would be to hear about uh, what's going into our waste and then come up with an organics plan from that like later in the meeting we're supposed to go over it or the next meeting we're supposed to go over that i think that would help quite a bit into sending a, a good message into what we we would like to see happen is knowing what's in the waste that's system a very already. Good. What kind of yeah, that's a that's a great point, Aiden. Thanks for bringing that up because we are looking at our waste composition, right, Ewan? When 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 is that information coming back? They um, 
they've done the uh, fall field work and they're actually on their second week of the winter collection as we speak. So from that, I have had some preliminary information provided to me um, on the waste composition from the fall uh, collection. And now they'll be doing this collection and we should have a report by the end of this month that I'll be sharing with the Environment Committee for the future meetings to discuss. But uh, um, probably to nobody's surprise, organics are a fairly large component of what people are sending to the landfill site just based on the preliminary numbers. So when, when, so that would that go to council first and then that would, or yes. is, I, I think that draft okay. report would go to council and then council would probably flip it over to the environment committee for, uh, you know, uh, further, further comments and insight. Okay, but you think that'd be by the end of the month that would be out? End of the month, maybe mid-March. It, it's, it's sometimes it's difficult okay. to say in the circumstances uh, that we're dealing with, but yeah. uh, everything gets delayed a little bit, but uh, by mid-March at the latest, we should have all that data together oh. and, uh, and, and in a uh, comprehensive report. So, so Aiden, with that additional information of sort of that we won't have, like, are you, are you, yeah. do you, so do I guess you like, what I'm saying is uh, we could get the ball rolling, I guess, or whatever, but to have an actual plan would be nice to know what we're dealing with a little more, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So if, for example, we were to, you know, recommend today that this, you know, that council would, um, you know, we recommend the council to consider this program and to have a presentation. We put that in the minutes today, and correct me if I'm wrong, you and we would put that in the minutes today, and then when we approve the minutes the next time, our next meeting, then that would be automatically in the council's agenda. Is that correct? That is correct. So the discussions today would be part of draft minutes that would then be circulated to the committee for their review for errors and omissions. At our next meeting, which would be in early March, if you're looking at monthly meetings at the present time, uh, we would then have the minutes approved and they would go to the second meeting in March. So by the time the minutes would hit the council table formally, we should have some of the results from the composition study. So they would have both. Yeah. And that you know, that might actually be very good timing too, because with that information of the waste composition, and then this having, you know, as a, a suggestion to look at this information and how that could help tackle that, it might make a lot of sense mm -hmm. in terms of timing. Tie that together with an updated list of recyclable materials. <laughs> yeah. Ideally. Fair. Fair. You're jumping ahead here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just excited by what's coming. <laughs> Angie, did you want to add anything else? Or? No, it's uh, nice to have others talking. So <laughs> good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So all right, so I'm hearing now what I'm hearing, hopefully I'm paraphrasing this well, is that you know, for the minutes we can, we can put in the minutes that you know, the environment committee, you know, we recommend that, uh, that, the, that the, the food cycler program be brought uh, to council's awareness. And you know, we recommend that they receive a presentation by, by the company. Does that sound about right? I don't, I, I'm sure Crystal or Ewan could wordsmith that a bit better. But. Well, and it, I, I'll add to that. It might be beneficial to ensure that Food Cycler has updated information from the South Dundas project so that they're bringing something back that does expand on, on what they're sharing, uh, just so that they're making the best use of council's time. I definitely think um, I'll, I'll be able to, to reflect that in the minutes for sure. And uh, Alex is actually one of the attendees. He's he's listening in on this. So um, together we'll uh, yeah. Hi Alex. Um, we'll we'll make sure to um, yeah follow through with your recommendation. Okay, great. And uh, we're good with leaving it like that. We don't we don't have to have a formal resolution, do we? We're good to leave it in the minutes like this. 
If it's reflected Oops. in the minutes, that's fine. Okay, perfect. The only thing uh, I would suggest when those minutes come forward to council meeting um, that um, you as chair, uh, Councillor Dvorsky, uh, make sure that council's aware of that item in the minutes. Uh, sure. And that they're just not passed over. Okay. Perfect. I, I, I like. I tend to pull a lot, so I'm happy to <laughs> pull. Uh, okay. So, um, so then the so moving on then, um, the next point was Angie was asking for an update to the bag limit um, uh, recommendation that we made. We re recommended that council look again at the bag limits. Uh, in view of you know the information we have on landfill uh, remaining life, um, so at that time, so this was a couple of council meetings ago, it was received by council, and council directed um, you, you and or staff to um, develop a report on that, uh, on the situation and potential recommendations or way to deal with it. So I don't know if you and if you're able to speak to the progress on that uh, on that or yeah at this point uh, we haven't uh, done a whole lot of uh, research on on the bag limits I do have the uh, previous research I did uh, in SDNG um, and we do also know that uh, the current contracts for household collections um, they go through till November 30th of this year so um, with the waste composition study, with the regional draft report that will be uh, brought forward a little later in, the, in tonight's agenda, um, that uh, that discussion on the bag limits uh, can be brought back to council. But it was very clear that they wanted to uh, they wanted to revisit bag limits and uh, consider options for um, going forward. Okay. But still, it's probably something that won't go to council for a couple months. It'll probably be. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, it'll be probably later in the spring, early summer, before uh, we have some information to bring back to council on that. Okay. Okay. Did you have other? Did you want any follow-up questions, Angie? No, just watching the move. Uh, get moving on that. We're like. <laughs> <laughs> We're so far behind from other places in eastern Ontario for bag limits, but there's only so much I can do. Yeah, I, we can only we can we can only recommend that they look at them. Yeah, and I mean, I mean you know, it is moving. In, it, you know, this is this is you know they're looking at it. They're get, there's more information. You and putting together the staff report, so that is, you know, that is more concrete. Uh, you know, action I think on the file. That, I think show some some progress. I think because I do share your concerns about you know our our land our you know this does have a I, well, big impact on our landfill. So we and we we know we get those reports regularly that the life on the landfill is reducing. Yeah. <laughs> one yeah. one thing that revolves around the committee, right? So is yeah, the exactly the lifespan of the landfill. So we need to. Uh, Need to move to 2021 with everybody else in Eastern Ontario. So. so, on that point, looking at what Eastern Ontario, specifically SDNG, is is doing, uh, Ewan has an update on the regional waste management project. Good transition. Um, yeah, this is uh, hot off the presses. Um, we just received the report. Um, Crystal LeBlanc and I, the uh, Director of Roads and Waste Management, um, newly appointed as of uh, February 1st, as of yesterday, um, will be uh, taking over the role of uh, managing the, the waste management pro, uh, program. Uh, this report is the regional project. It's a draft report with uh, all of the municipalities in SDNG. And uh, I admittedly have not gone through it in any great detail. What I was hoping uh, and what I advised the consultant last week that I'd like to do is I, want, I wanted to uh, provide the, the copy to the uh, Environment Committee. I don't expect us to have read it or 
be in any position to discuss it in any great detail tonight. What I would suggest is that we take the next month to review the report, provide any comments, questions back to uh, the municipality, um, and then we can feed them back through to the consultant. And once they have the, the feedback from the um, uh, Environment Committee, they'll be uh, preparing a presentation that will, will go to all of the respective councils in SDNG. So in your email, you and you suggested that we focus on specific sections. It is 86 pages, so. Yeah, I think what we want to focus on is, is the um, the potential impacts to South Glengarry if we go to a regional model. I think we want to concentrate on, on uh, not, not being protectionist by any means, because I you know, certainly don't want to dismiss the regional model as viable. But one of the questions I asked of the consultant is uh, if we migrate away from um, using our own in-house landfill sites, we do have a stranded asset. And we could be advancing the time frame for when we need to invest in that stranded asset to close the landfills. And we know the closure of a landfill can be quite expensive. So um, I think we need to consider the life cycle of our landfill sites and the benefits of going to a regional model. And, and, and I don't have the answers to that yet, but I think it's something we need to, uh, we need to be comfortable with. Um, as we move forward. So the, uh, the regional model is, is uh, one that's been discussed for many, many years. Uh, it is probably where we need to be at some point. It's just when that happens and uh, how it happens that I think we need to concentrate on. But uh, um, again, I haven't gone through the report in any great detail, so uh, I, I can't really speak too much more to it than that. Okay. But so the, the main ask is that, so for, we, you know, ideally we would as committee between now and our next meeting, which if we can do them monthly, that we'll review this over the next month. Correct. And then, um, okay. And so you think, and, and, and you're suggesting that the lens that we look at is how the potential impacts on South Glengarry. I think we have to look at it through that lens as, uh, as South Glengarry residents, but we also need to look at the bigger picture as well. So. Um, I don't want to uh, monopolize too much of uh, the committee's time. I know that's an 80 page document with a lot of information. So I don't anticipate that it's going to be an easy read for anybody, but uh, if, if we can indulge upon you to uh, take what time you can and go through it and, uh, and provide your comments and insights, uh, it would be most appreciated. And that's, uh, that's gonna help the consultant finalize the, uh, the report. Okay, so, so, uh, and that was going to be my question is in terms of like the formal process of developing this. So this is a, it's still a draft. Is that correct? Yeah, this is just okay. in draft form. Uh, it hasn't been presented to uh, councils as of yet. It's just been presented to administration and I asked if I could bring it forward to our environment committee as well. Okay. Okay. So then in terms of a deadline to provide feedback. The, you think a month is reasonable or? Yeah, I prefer a month, uh, but I think the consultant is going to be taking feedback for the next six to eight weeks. So if we need a okay. little more time, we can take that. Okay, I was, I was almost, I was concerned it was going to be, you would be saying they want feedback like in a shorter time frame. Yeah. Does anyone have questions on? Uh, no. I I, 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 only, I received it on Monday. I haven't flipped through it yet myself. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I need some time. <laughs> but uh, but we're generally consultant has been very good to work with, and it, if it might facilitate the review. Um, I've had a number of virtual meetings with them on the report and uh, perhaps I could ask them to uh, 
set up a presentation to the Environment Committee just to give a, an executive summary of the report findings, if you think that would be useful, or would you rather just spend some time, quality time with the report and the luxury of your uh, of your homes and uh, and then uh, provide feedback that way? I mean, just glancing at it, it's it's well laid out and whatnot. It's not going to be a difficult Okay. Read. So, um, but I, quick question before I forget, you know, do you know when the North Glengarry landfill opened? So I was just looking, it has 36 years remaining. Which one? Uh, I'm not sure. Michael might be better. Oh, yeah, Mike. Better. Are, are you asking North Glengarry or North Lancaster? No, it says North Glengarry in the chart of looking at. It says Glen Robertson, years remaining 36. I'm just curious how when it opened. Uh, Compared to what, how ours well, it's, opened. it's uh, when it actually started, I don't know. I know it's been there for a number of years and it's an ongoing, that's where everything is going right now. Alexandria is closed and there is, well, there's discussion about what we're doing with it. Um, but uh, yeah, Glenn Robertson is, is the ongoing, is the functioning one right now. And it's got a good bit of capacity available. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It says forty thousand tons compared to our North Lancaster that has six six thousand. Yeah. I'm just curious. Just remember that tons depends on what goes in, right? And compaction. Yeah. So, so to Ewan's point, does anyone would anyone like to have the consultant come uh, and talk I'm all right to us? reading it yeah yeah i'm already is reading it too. somebody i can contact if i have questions or something or is... would we funnel the questions through you Ewan? probably um through myself and through crystal okay. well i think questions would essentially be part of the feedback that uh if it raises questions then obviously there's something in it that needs to be clarified right Okay. There's still so, but no, but it's a good point. We shouldn't be shy with those because, like you say, it doesn't hurt to provide to ask those questions, clarifying questions, you know, when they come up versus necessarily waiting for a month. You know, if it's you know some of these things you want to you know for clarification, it's best to you know hit them right away. For sure. Okay. Sorry, I got cut. my internet cut out right after um, Mike didn't have an answer for me. So <laughs> I don't know if I missed anything important. <laughs> nice place marker. <laughs> we were. I didn't like we were, the answer, and then I said, "That's it." <laughs> so we were just. We were, we were. I think. I'm sorry if I'm getting the time points wrong, but uh, and out of order, we were saying that we don't need to have the consultant. But if then we have questions, Aiden asked if he had questions, where to send those and you could send them to you and then Crystal. And Mike made a good point that if you have questions, that probably shows that the report needs some clarifications. And uh, I suggested if it's something, you know, to help understand that you should ask it right away versus waiting for a month. So I think, I think that was everything. Yep, I think so. There is, so, I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through this. There's an incredible amount of information in this report. This is this is one of the most detailed reports I've seen in a long time, I think. This will be interesting. The Environment Committee is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so um, that one, uh, we're good for that. Uh, we're moving on to the new business where um, we had added, you and added um, that he would uh, touch on a, a bit of inf updated information with regards to recycling in Cornwall. Yeah, and I have to, uh, I have to thank Jacqueline Milner for uh, bringing this to my attention. She, um, she uh, sent me an email and advised me that the city of Cornwall uh, was now uh, accepting shopping bags, plastic shopping bags and saran wrap at their material recovery facility. And, and I wasn't aware of that. So I did uh, follow up with uh, 
the city of Cornwall and they have um, upgraded their equipment uh, at the uh, MRF in Cornwall and they have expanded their list of acceptable materials to include um, shopping bags, uh, plastic shopping bags and saran wrap. And there was a couple of other things. I just emailed the list to the committee today. Um, what I'd like to do then, because there is a change and this, this is um, a change that does um, impact on South Glengarry, our materials that we collect um, can include these items. So uh, our agreement with the city of Cornwall is that whatever they're accepting for recycling um, and diversion that um, those uh, materials are extended to the residents of South Glengarry. So the uh, Cornwall website includes a list. Um, I've already spoke with our uh, communications staff person um, and um, we'll be looking at uh, doing some promotion through our social media sites and our website for the uh, expanded list of materials and uh, making sure that we uh, advise residents uh, that uh, the materials are now accepted and uh, hopefully promote that they, uh, they take advantage of that to, uh, to divert these materials from our landfill site. So just got the email um, this morning or last night. So uh, it's relatively new. I do have some, some items I want to confirm. Um, um, Councillor Jaworski, Chairperson Jaworski sent me a couple of questions from uh, some local uh, restaurants as far as uh, some of their products. So I don't have the answers to all of that, but I'll be, uh, I'll be bouncing those off of David Kuhn at the city of Cornwall and uh, just ensuring that we have a, a good understanding of what's included in the list and how it's to be recycled. Um, the plastic garbage bags or the plastic shopping bags, um, they need to be uh, bundled. They need to be, you know, you basically stuff them all in one and put them in your recycle box or your clear bag. So uh, more to come on that, but I just wanted to uh, provide the Environment Committee with that update. It's good news that those products are now being recycled, recycled by the city of Cornwall. And uh, hopefully we can get that message out to our residents and update our website. And um, we'll also have to look at, uh, one of the problems with the collection calendars is it's a static document. So if there's changes happen between last year in July and August of this year, we don't capture them in the calendar. We have to wait till we republish the calendar. So um, that's that's one of the, the down, downfalls of, of, uh, of the hard copy calendar, but uh, we still can uh, work at promoting uh, these changes through our website, social media sites, and uh, and get the word out there. I just wanted to make sure the uh, the committee was aware of those changes, and that we'll be uh, we'll be looking at uh, moving forward to advise the residents accordingly. Thank you. Did they did they because as I recall, when we had our tour of the MRF, they at that time there was no market, as I recall, for plastic film. So does that mean, so the, mar the market has changed now? There is like a recyclable market for plastic film? That is a question that needs to be answered. I don't have the answer to that. So uh, I'll, have to, uh, I'll have to get back to the committee on that. But that's a very good question as to, okay, what, uh, what has changed as far as the marketing of these materials? I know black plastics which has always been a problem. That's, that's still an unacceptable material on the list, but uh, the clear plastics are accepted now. So whether there's now a market or some, some ways to uh, recycle those products, I don't know that, but I, I will be following up and uh, finding out. Hmm. Does that also mean like the um, blue recycling bags, would that be included in that? Yeah, and I, I need to get some clarification before I can uh, advise as to what it what is and what is not acceptable in, in any further detail. Okay. Right, Andrew, you're talking about blue plastics like that people use for the recycling. What was that? Sorry, my internet's like horrible. Are, are you talking about the blue plastic bags that people would use for the recycling? Yeah, like I put like my shredded paper in that. Yep. and those blue bags. So I'm wondering if those bags themselves would now be recyclable. 
based on mm. I would I would expect, but based on shopping bags and and saran wrap, I would think that those would be in there. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. Oh, another another thing to maybe follow up on too is the um, the bail wrap plastic. Is that? Oh, the bail uh, bail uh, twine. Yeah. Not the twine. I'm talking about the oh. wrap. The wrap. The wrap. Yeah. yeah I, again, that's a question I'd have to ask. It's been something we've discussed uh, even when we did the last uh, waste recycling strategy. It was an item that was brought up in a rural community that uh, the um, bale wrap for um, the agricultural community is is a, a very uh, big um, problem in, uh, in in disposing of and recycling. So, well, in the your email today, you on uh specifically excluded uh plastic wrap like from pallets so it's got that that just that bit of tacky yeah. to it, so it might like, fall into that michael yeah. probably would yeah, yeah that it would not be acceptable i would think but, but worth but, the question uh, yep absolutely so um i mean thinking more sort of higher level like um, I mean, I'm on the committee. I'd like, you know, I, I, I'm kind of sad or embarrassed that I didn't know about the plastic film being uh, acceptable in Cornwall. I don't, so I don't know if there's, I don't know if this is, up, I mean, if this is outside of our mandate or, but it'd be nice if we could somehow incorporate some sort of better ongoing communication uh, in terms of like what can be recycled and, and, and what can't. I mean, I know like, for example, South Stormont, they also go to the Cornwall Murph and they use the the um, the Recycle Coach app to try and help, you know, if people have questions to look things up about what can and can't be recycled. And my understanding is the bat database, you know, it's 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 kept up to date by the by Cornwall since that's the receiving uh, agency. So I don't know if that's, is that outside of our mandate to, to recommend something like that or? I don't believe it would be. Recycle Coach did do a presentation to council a few years back. Uh, we chose not to go that route, but uh, you know, with the landscape changing as quickly as it is, it, it might be worth circling back and uh, taking another look at that uh, that app and seeing if it might be. I love something. that app. Um, I used it a lot when I was working at NAD in Cornwall. But I think the Recycle Coach is is something that definitely yeah. would be usable. So we can Holly. we can uh, we can bring that back to council as a, a recommendation in the minutes to uh, to maybe uh, take a another look at uh, recycle coach based on the, um, the the changing landscape in the recycling industry and uh, you know it's difficult to keep up with uh, where the markets are and what's acceptable what's not it's uh, it's uh, changing uh, fairly quickly. Yeah. I can't say I've ever seen that app. What does it do exactly? So, so maybe Angie, you've you 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 already said you've used it many times, so maybe you could explain it. Um. Yeah. It's just you just kind of type in if you think some if you want to know if something's recyclable, and it tells you if it's recyclable. This is for Cornwall, and it would say yes. It it was. It was just pretty simple like that. Um. And then uh, I haven't used it in about a year, <laughs> but that's what I can remember from it. And I really did. I really liked it and I used it a lot. And I had my, uh, my employees showed it to them too at the time and asked them to download it as well for work. Yeah, I can see that being beneficial for sure. So, I mean, it's accessible on the web. <laughs> and it's also as a, uh, you know, you can have it as an app on your phone. And I can't remember what I looked up. I think I might've looked at pizza boxes trying to figure, you know, like, are you, can we recycle pizza boxes? <laughs> and uh, I think, it, I mean, I, I knew because our stuff goes to Cornwall, I was like, well, I can probably trust what the Cornwall app is telling us. Yeah. But, uh, that, yeah, like food, food, like products, like like the paper that got grease on it, they, they didn't accept that. But uh, in that case, I pulled off. So would it just be fine for us just to use the Cornwall app or are is our, our trucks picking up the same thing as it would in Cornwall? Well, there might be a light, there might be a licensing issue, like, you know, in terms of like, if we're officially using it, that we should officially have an agreement with them. But uh, I believe that, that is uh, the case. Yeah. And that's, can I ask you on what, uh, 
you said it was presented to council and decided not to go that way. What was the deciding factor? What was the factor that uh, provided or prevented them rather from, from I'm going to say signing on, I guess. I really don't know. I can't recall for sure. It, it, it was really more just a matter of was it, uh, was it more than what we needed as far as what we're doing for promotions, you know, with the calendar, with the website, with the Facebook. Uh, I think, I think uh, there was a thought that maybe, you know, maybe we had this covered and perhaps given the, the recent change that we weren't aware of, that might not be the case. So um, it was, it was really just about uh, how many, um, how many promotional items can we use in the, uh, and the recycling uh, to advise residents of uh, recycling programs. So, I, just a, a I mean, thought. I, I mean, it doesn't have to. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Well, I was just going to say, sorry, a thought for future consideration as far as the the paper calendar being a hard copy. Uh, if it's got, you know, check recycle coach app or recyclecoach.ca, whatever it is, for the latest information on what is and what is not acceptable. Uh, yeah. you know, cause they're I, with everything that's going to go on in the next few years, I would expect there will be several more changes about what will and won't be acceptable even, even within a three to six month period. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, I would say, I would... sorry, go ahead, Angie. No, I was just going to say, we wouldn't have thought like PPE four years ago was going to be a concern, right? So things change like I was just adding on to what Mike says just things change yeah. so rapidly yeah. now yeah and I guess what I would suggest in our in our minutes to reflect in our major that we don't perhaps we could say such as recycle coach I mean I don't think you know that might not be the I mean I, I think it's more about getting the timely communication accessible to residents because people definitely are asking the information I mean it's I often get asked the question of Steph do you know if this is recyclable and you know It'd be helpful if you know I had somewhere where I could point to versus uh, sort of sending emails, which seems sort of like more resource intensive than it needs to be, right? Or even promoting the social media that you guys focus on all the time. You know, you do your updates, a lot of updates on social media, and maybe not everybody thinks to check there. So, it'd be something else to add to the calendar too. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm all for repetition, lots of different channels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing at me. No. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking about spaced repetition. <laughs> um, um, uh, so um, I think, are we good? Are we good with that last item then? So we'll get, uh, we'll get, We'll get more information and we'll reflect in our minutes that we suggest that, uh, you know, that council look at ways of improving communication in terms of what can be recyclable, the timeliness and, the, and accessibility of the information. Um, so I think, I think, uh, I think those are the, the main points uh, to address today. I think um, now are we, uh, are we going to be, I'd like to try and set a date for the next meeting if if that's good for everyone. Yep. So uh, now oh. I I recognize it's a, it's it's asking a lot to be meeting very like you know almost on a monthly frequency or I guess maybe it was like six weeks, I think, since our last meeting approximately. Mid, mid December is um but uh, would in a month's time work? Like, let's say if we were to do again, like the first Tuesday of March, is that, uh, does that work for folks? Or I'm just throwing out a date, like, you know, same in the evening, would that work for the majority? Or does someone have a other suggestion they'd like to make? That, that works, works for me. me. Yep, that works. I'd also, I'd also, propose a, an end of the, the day as opposed to a, an evening, but that depends on everybody's availability. I think uh, I think for some of our members during the day is difficult. 
at I'm the end of the day like with five o'clock or five thirty or something just so it's okay. at the end of work and do it go okay. home <laughs> okay. uh i I'm mean i'm struggling I, to stay awake but that's just me <laughs> does five would five o'clock work or is that too early five 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 work or, yeah. no so and so did it does it not work for anyone? I can do 530, but not five. Okay. Okay. So because I will be in transit at five. Okay. So so everyone's okay with 530 then? Is that yep. okay, Mike? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That way, if we have them more frequently, I think we're also we're pretty good at not making them go on too long. I think uh, you know, we should be done in under an hour. So I think that it's good not to try and bite off too many topics at once. So the next one will have the you know feedback on the waste, the regional waste management. So I think that would be a, that's a, definitely a, a, a small enough chunk that we can bite off fairly quickly. I think. Is there a presentation coming up from anyone? For the next meeting we have to consider. Ewan? No. Okay. Nothing uh, nothing that I know of. Okay. Unless unless we want unless we would want the consultant to join us when we provide our feedback, but I mean no. that's if they're well, if they're still doing this over six to eight weeks, as as Yohan thinks they are, then it's probably a little premature for them as well. Okay. okay. Alrighty then. Okay, so we're set for the first Tuesday in March at five thirty. And so March second. So is that what it yeah. is? Yeah, it is. So it's exactly. Uh, a month. 28 Sorry? days. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a number. <laughs> All right. So it's a little bit quicker than a month, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I right. Just, I didn't have the calendar open. I just said, oh, you know, first Tuesday in March. <laughs> Which is the first Tuesday in, yeah, great, February. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Great. Well, then. If uh, then that would bring us to the end, and unless there's anything else anyone wants to add, we can we can adjourn at uh, seven fifty eight. So, Motion, hey. are you motioning to adjourn, Stephanie? <laughs> you know what? I don't think I have to. But <laughs> would you like it if someone wants to make a motion? <laughs> I think the motion chair to adjourn. <laughs> Uh, thank you, AJ. Who seconds? Anyone seconding? Yep. So Mike can't go up. Everybody, everybody wants to go. <laughs> Favor. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. I, thank you for joining us. Thanks for continuing to commit your energy and your time to this. We really appreciate it. So we'll see everybody.